Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got lots of new hot tech, including new bikes, lightweight wheels, comments of the week, and of course, the bike vault. Plus, we're going to be continuing our discussion from last week's show about how faster tech is potentially making well, bike racing and descending more dangerous by speaking to well, one of the best uh, bike riders of the 1980s. And we're also going to be talking about the trend for new all-round bikes, as these are potentially the only bike you will ever need. So we're going to begin this week's show with a follow-up uh, from last week's talking point about how you know faster, more aerodynamic tech uh, and better brakes are potentially making racing more dangerous today by allowing riders to take more risks and be be faster. Mm. Um, and it did, um, we got quite a lot of comments in the comment section, didn't we, of yeah. the discussion thing, which is great. And we're gonna pick out a few of those comments to read out uh, now. So the first one is from Tom. I love how you talk about how you couldn't stop with rim brakes. Rim brakes are brilliant when set up correctly. And- I agree with that. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, another one from Bomb. Brakes in the 80s were not that bad because the braking surface was on aluminium rims. Rim brakes, which were, mu which were much worse, on carbon rims after around 2000. Yeah. Potentially. And another comment, rim brakes with alloy wheels were fine for any descents I've ever done. Yeah, they are. I mean, they are pretty good. Yeah. Brakes are, but brakes are definitely better now. Um, and, you know, rim brakes on carbon, like in the wet terrible <laughs> like just can't stop um but to, to get a, a you know really good expert opinion on this we reached out to philippa york who won the polka dot jersey of the best climber um for the tour de france and yeah it was just one of the best riders in in, in the 1980s yeah. and well she had some interesting things to say because we thought you know her opinion would be, be really good on better this. than our opinion yeah um and and so you know, she she very kindly sent a nice lengthy email, uh, but she said that I don't think that we were more risk averse at all back then, and and our chances of crashing were governed by the equipment available. Most descents you have a tiny margin of error, and if you put in you know put it in percentage terms, then ninety five percent of you and your bike's capabilities. Sometimes you would be at a hundred hundred percent of your you and your bike's capabilities, depending on the weather. Um, and if there was, you know, a big drop off at the side of the road, then you know, you were completely at your physical and mental limit um, after a climb, you know, you you could well have all of those circumstances coming in at, at once. Mm. And she also says what a lot of the commenters are saying, which are that you could lock both of your front and back wheels with rim brakes even before disc brakes came along, and that's back in the 80s. Um, and you you develop enough skill to hopefully negotiate the, the descents with that equipment. She says the limiting factor was that the tires um, weren't as good, not really the braking capacity. So she says that with 21 millimeter tubulars uh, inflated at seven or eight bar, the contact patch was really small. Yeah. I mean, you think now they're using well, double 28, that, yeah. 30s, at a much lower pressure. Yeah. Um, and she says, she also feels, this is an interesting tech observation, that there were slight differences between Clement and Vittoria, for example, which were two leading tyre choices back then. And she always says that she felt uh, Clements were slightly more supple, but people had their preferred option. And she says, in terms of the rubber, uh, tread pattern didn't make much difference, as you know, you don't aquaplane on a push bike. Um, but when, you know, she was on uh, Perjo, she said they did prototype testing for Michelin and they made a tire for wet conditions that allowed you to behave as if it was dry. This sound, I thought it sounded really cool. They didn't last long though if the sun came out. So I was like, you know, we should look into that as something looking at the like, yeah, wet weather tires from back then. I wonder if they do them now. Um, and she said that they had dry weather compounds which were, you know, faster but really slippy when, when moisture appeared on the road. And you know, this was um, this was before like clinches became widespread. But looking at why riders were slower before discs, she says you have three main reasons: contact patch of the tire is uh, was smaller, 
the braking capacities were less, like you couldn't just stop as quickly. Yeah. Like the brakes are less powerful. And aerodynamics. So, you know, she's saying that um, a, a bigger tyre, which is more supple, allows more rubber on the road. Um, and the difference with rim brakes compared to disc brakes now means maybe you have to start braking five metres earlier with your rim brakes than you do with discs, and that's even in the dry. In the wet, she reckons it's more like 10, 15 metres. And then the aero wheels and, and the more aero kit and you know the lighter equipment means that you then accelerate out of the corner that you've gone into faster mm. um and the aero clothing and things add more speed yeah. yet again once you get up to speed and so she says that she doesn't believe riders are taking more risks than before racing is racing and riders give the same of themselves whatever the era what has changed is when it does go wrong and the speeds are higher then there are more consequences are you better off to fall off in a, in a fabric you know, jersey and, and woolen shorts and a skin suit? Absolutely. Are riders taking more risks nowadays? No, it's always been fronting. I totally agree with what she said there. Well, you know, she was there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And you she's know, still like, really involved in the race and now doing commentary. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, you know, I think that's really interesting that, yeah, mm. the, the equipment is making it faster, but in terms of risk taking, the risk taking yeah, has always been definitely. the same. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, Philippa, for yeah, that. Yeah, it's been really interesting to, to hear it from a different angle and yeah. see what she had to say. So uh, next, we're going to talk about this week, about the do-it-all bike. Um, because what spurred this on is, is BMC has just launched its new road machine. Which is tech news in itself. And this bike caught our attention more so than some of the other bikes. And it might not have, you know, the fan hype that a lot of the new Pinarello Dogmas or the S Works Tarmac would, but this bike does offer something quite more significant than some of those other bikes. Yeah, and I think the first thing is the tyre clearance, a whopping 40 millimetres on it. It looks like a normal road bike, but You've got the option to put massive, chunky off-road tires, on. Yeah, off tires in there. Also to be very comfortable as well. So the, the road machine has been BMC's endurance platform, but they say that it's you know, 27% uh, more, more compliant. Now, that's down to a, a sort of revised rear triangle with additional flex, but uh, also it's got suspension on the stem with, with 20 millimetres of travel. Love that. It's also got an integrated light on the seat tube and on the down tube it has a nice little storage compartment as well so look, yeah like, like the cool. swap boxes from yeah. mountain biking yeah i like that so the bike isn't that heavy and the weight claimed is meant to be 963 grams for the medium frame and it is a little bit heavier than their last one which was 870 grams uh, so it's not the lightest but this bike has got a lot more functionality yeah and you know it's stronger in key areas yeah, they definitely seem to have like beefed it up um, to sort of make it more stronger and, and, and I guess, you know, more versatile. Uh, the top end model, though, with Jura Ace on it, is uh, claimed to be 7.1 kilograms, which is it's pretty light for a, yeah. a disc brake kind of bike with that much tyre clearance. And there are a whole host of, of builds, depending on what you're after. So there are some more road-specific builds and more gravel-equipped builds with like one by on them and bigger tyres and things like that. Um, but the thing is, though, and we feel like this is a thing, is this kind of do-it-all bike is significant because this isn't the only one. In fact, it's not even the only one that's come out in the last week because we also saw, pretty much at the same time, this drop. This is the NV Fray. Uh, we did a, a full story up on the GCN uh, news website, which you can, you can check out. But what do you think of that? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. I like yeah, it. I think it looks really smart. Yeah. It, it's also got 40 millimetre tyre clearance, like the BMC. Um, and geometry, which they reckon is more suited to real world riders rather than Tour de France pros. So, um, again, it's, it's got a taller head tube. But that's kind of like disguised with the, the sloping yeah, top it is. tube. I, kind yeah. of, I, quite, I quite like the way it looks. Mm. But the thing is, is those two aren't even the only ones this week. There's another one. So, size over at Sea Otter right now, where this has just been unveiled. Um, it's called the 51 Seeker by 51 Bikes. And, I mean, 
Wow. And they say that this bike is tailored for real riders and not pros, and it is super light as well, coming in at just 690 grams for a medium frame. Mm. And you fit 40 millimeter tires on there as well, so loads of clearance. Yeah, 690 grams. That is super light, that is, isn't yeah. it? That's mental for a bike that has that much tire clearance. Um, it's got T47 bottom bracket as well. Nerds will appreciate that. But the fact that the bike industry has, you know, three different brands have all released bikes that are all very similar in their application with whopping, all with 40 millimetre tire clearance and all, you know, of this, of this vein. It, it suggests that, well, I don't know, like, the bike industry Illuminati know something that we don't. And, and there's, they see that there's a, a real, I don't know, like demand for this type of bike and maybe there's going to be growth, yeah. and they'll be hoping that there's growth in this segment of this kind of bike. I think there's been such a boom in like gra in gravel riding and gravel bikes and road bikes are pretty similar anyway. Mm. They've just kind of gone, well, it'll surely be quite easy just to do a two in one. And what I really like about these bikes is that they look like road bikes as well when you've got road wheels and tires on there. Yeah. You, know, you wouldn't think that, oh, you know, that's looks a little bit different or that's a gravel bike. Yeah, a big chunky like yeah. gravel bike thing. Yeah, they look they, they do look like road bikes. The thing is though, is you know, and I love a good a good multi-tool, right? But the thing is, but multi-tools or like a Swiss army knife or something, they often are like just a collection of second rate tools compared to like having like the dedicated yeah. Park tool. Do you appreciate Careful the that, sponsor integration? <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the, the yeah. dedicated like tool that's just designed. And, and you know, in bike terms, that's like the dedicated aero bike. Yeah. You know, these are never going to be as aero or the, as that. Or they're never going to be a, a, as lightweight. Or, you know, mm. as as the dedicated pure climbing bike. And so, yeah, I don't know. But I feel like if you're not if you're not racing the Tour de France, you're not racing. You don't need that. Like. A two-in-one bike would be absolutely perfect for someone who, you know, isn't going racing. Yeah. I mean, we've always, like, had this thing, haven't we? Like, bike, we love talking about M plus one. And, like, that joke, cyclists always joke about it. Like, well, you know, oh, you just buy another bike, just buy another bike. But realistically, when bikes are costing, like, as much as they do these days, you can see why that there's then, like, yeah. right, well, it's much more cost-effective to have the one bike that, mm. okay, it's not maybe the quite the lightest or quite the most aero, but it's pretty it's, aero, it's, it's up, pretty it's light. There. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're 95% there maybe, mm. but then you've just got one bike that can do it all. Um, and you can have one, you know, then you only need one power meter, you know, things like that. And it, it, you can see how it becomes mm. yeah, appealing and mm. you just get maybe different wheel sets. And lastly, we would love to hear from you. What would you choose? We'd really like to know if these bikes are going to be viable. Yeah, like, you know, if you were buying a new bike tomorrow, would you get one of these, like a, an all-rounder bike or something, you know, like more specific? Um, yeah, let us know in the comments. And, oh, one more thing I forgot about the BMC is, oh, BMC have actually got a, like, a collaboration going with 4i uh, power meters from Canada. Pretty cool. So that means... The new bikes come with their, th their new 3 plus. Um, so basically power the power meter's free. In girl maths, <laughs> Yeah, that you get their three plus pro power meter. I'm not very good at maths either. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, let's do hot tech. Uh, so beginning, let's do some quick fire hot tech news. First thing is the Van Riesel RCR which is one of the hottest bikes in the world right now, being mm. ridden by AG2R uh, Decathlon. Um, they've been winning loads of races on it. They won Brabant's Appeal last week as well, another race. They're having like their best season in decades, and I think that's why this sort of bike, which is seen as like a, an affordable superbike, um, or a more affordable superbike, is, is so hot right now, has just become available. The team replica, you can now buy it in Decathlon. Pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how successful it is. Yeah, M more hot tech. In our very own shop, we have our Camelback bottles with our GCN logo. We have quite a few different bottles. We obviously have this one, and we also have the Podium Stainless Steel one, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's stainless steel, sustainable, will last you forever. Yeah, if you're into 
if you're into that. Gretel will be Gretel like. She'll love that. She'll love that. Yeah. I think she's got quite one of the juicy animals really? actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, big fan. Um, we've also got some new wheels, new lightweight wheels, which mentioned at the top of the show, from Reynolds. Uh, so these are 25 millimetres deep, so not you know, not super aero rim, 21 millimetres wide, internal, but the external width is massive, so they're pretty bulbous, they're 30 millimetres wide. So it's a real sort of oval shape with the tower, with the tyre on it, um, optimised for those, you know, wider tyres. Um, there are different levels available for the wheels, depending on, on your budget. The top ones are the AR25 black labels, which have Industry 9 hubs, um, and they're just 12,000... No, not 12,000, that would be really heavy. Uh, <laughs> 1,251 grams a pair claimed by, by Reynolds, but they look they very sick. smart. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do really like like lightweight climbing wheels. I feel they're something that have, like is, is less commonly seen these days. Yeah, it is. No, you always see quite deep, deep chunky, yeah. arrow, fast wheels. Lightweight wheels do feel mint. Yeah. Um, Need all the helping. Yeah. yeah. And we also have our Topi competition, which is still ongoing, where you have a chance to win some pretty cool prizes. Just saying last week, how much you like the bike box accent, actually. Yeah, I do. I mean, love it. I like it as well. It yeah. is. It is. A so great you can win box. one. It's the, the Pack Go Bike Box. Uh, check it out. The, there's a link in the description below if you want to enter. It's free to enter. Um, and yeah, uh, the top prize is winning a Pack Go uh, EX bike bike pack bike box, which. I think my favourite, well, it's really easy to pack, but my favourite thing about it, which is an underestimated thing about bike boxes. Is it the wheels? The wheels. Yeah. It's so easy to push around airports. Yeah. It's not like you have to, have to pick it up and drag it, when and your shoulder doesn't hurt. When you're a weedy little cyclist with yeah, and little T-Rex arms, yeah. <laughs> these things are important. We also have three runner-up prizes as well to win the tune-up station. Um, we'll leave a link down below so you can enter and give it a go, you never know, you might get lucky. Yeah. And if you win the bike box, it means that you have to book a cycle on holiday. Yeah, just go and ride it about the ways. There you go. Mm. It's now time for comments of the week. Yeah, so first <laughs> up we've got some uh, comments from uh, the Problem With Power Meters video that Alex did. So the first one is from ATSR, who says the biggest problem with a power meter is that it provides an exact measure of how much I suck as a cyclist. That is true. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah, I, I feel his pain. Yeah. And especially because when I was racing, obviously you use power meters all the time, and then I went through a period of, you know, not really looking at my power, and now I'm starting to do the zone two training. Yeah, how's it going? It's going really well, but you know when you're just like, oh, my, my zone two used to be like 200 watts, and now it's... It's quite a bit lower than that. Yeah. It's all it's relative. Just, oh, it's all hurts. relative. Yeah. Next comment from Fatboy Aussie. I've got the Asioma spindles. Completely changed my training. Love the data it gives me. Yeah, there's a, a lot of comments giving love to the Asioma pedals um, there, like their pedal-based power meter. But yeah, it's good to see. Like, mm. you know, we, we learn a lot as well from, from what people write in the comments. And yeah, a lot of people saying that that is a, is a great product. Nice. Um, Bukoe is next. He says that for 95% of us hobby riders, ah, so this comment is from uh, Hank and Connor's video about compliance when they were riding on the cobbles over at Roubaix. And he says uh, for 95% of us uh, hobby riders, being comfy on the bike is by far the most important thing. You're more likely to train if you're comfy. Your ass and hands will, you know, not be 90% of your, your pain and problem after riding three to six hours. I do a bit of short TT riding and my TT is 100% for speed. I don't care about comfort on a 30 minute ride, I just need power and speed. But for long rides, which is, you know, social or hobby riding, comfort is everything. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. Because yeah. every time you're uncomfortable on a bike, it just makes you not enjoy it. And you want to enjoy your bike rides. It makes you slower as well if you feel discomfort. A scientist told me that. I thought yeah, you were going to say it makes you slower if you're comfortable then. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, another comment from Ras... Rasmus Wee. Rasmus Wee. Um, a thing worth noting is that a really stiff bike with, with tyres pumped up really hard actually feels great under some circumstances. I used to love riding with my tyres pumped really hard because vibrations are essentially information. It made me feel like the bike was telling me absolutely everything about the road. Hmm. I, I think there's merit to tyres being pumped up really, really hard in certain situations, but I don't think, yeah, I'm not totally, I I'm prefer not, to have grip and smoothness. 
And she, I just think about being, when I feel lots of vibrations through the road, it's not very nice. Uh, yeah, you're like, oh, uh, I'm like, oh, God's sake, this road's so bumpy and... Yeah. I, 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 no, I can't I get sort water. of know where it's coming from. I think one of the things I would say is, like, when you're in, like, hill climb races, like what we have in the UK, I know that a lot of the time you put a rider, you know, experienced riders will put a disproportionate amount of uh, pressure in the front tyre mm. because you're out the saddle and you're pumping. And, then if and you've got too like, much in your back tyre, you're just going to... Yeah, yeah, if you're too much in your back yeah, yeah you'll, you'll spin, you're going to get traction. So you want less in the back tyre for traction, but you want more in the front tyre where traction is not an issue because you're not losing it through pumping losses like you would on a suspension yeah. fork on a mountain bike with the tyre. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, that. Right. <laughs> um, so, bike vault, come on. Let's do it. You got the bell? I've got the bell. So Don't this worry. is where... Ordinarily, do we really need to explain the bike vault? Well, the problem is right. Is is Killian is is he's been apprehended. He's been put to work in the bowels, the dungeons of GCN Megabase to fix the uploader. We are still having issues with the uploader, but ordinarily, what you do is you go into the link in the description below where you find the uploader, and then you submit pictures of your bikes, and we rate them to be nice or super nice. Now, my bike, I submitted my bike last week. That was obviously super nice. So we'll move did you, on. Did you watch the show? It was super nice. Super um, just a nice one, is it? Oh gosh, there is quite a few things wrong now you, now you zoom in. So anyway, uh, this week, first up, we've got Brett Barnett, who's at Pikes Peak um, in Colorado. Oh, Colorado. With a Canyon Grail CFSL. Love that. What do you make of that? Love it. I really want to go to Colorado. I've never been. It's, it's amazing. Do you like it? Yeah. Probably one of the best trips I've done, actually. Hmm. Yeah, no, really loved it. Beautiful part of the world. It looks great in the picture. It what does. do you make what do you make of that? Is that nice uh, or super Let me nice? just turn my brightness up and really inspect what we have going on here. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. It's a bit it's a bit I mean the, the sun's not in the optimal location to You've got quite a bit of shadow. Yeah. But, but I, I'm going to go super nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to go super nice as well. I love a gravel nice bike in its natural habitat. That is, that is the natural habitat. That's peak it. gravel yeah. right there, isn't it? That is proper gravel, that. Yeah. Who's next? Uh, next up, um, Marchi. McHarry, I think. <laughs> it's either Charry mm, or McHarry. Oh, yeah, it could be McHarry. <laughs> um, oh, another canyon. A CF SLX8 Ooh. with SRAM Force. Is that... I thought it was a colourful chain, but is... maybe it's just my eyes. I think it's your eyes. But look at my screen. It looks, I think it's it looks... clean. Yeah, I don't think it it's a gold quite... chain. Stand down. Stand down. Um, <laughs> matte, matte black. I think that is super nice. That has long valves on that. Super nice. Nice clear background. Yeah. No, I mean, the no valve, they are long boy valves. <laughs> long but boy valves. we could... <laughs> I mean, he has lined them up. Yeah, he has. I think, yeah. Next up, Sid Treads. Uh, this is a custom painted Orbea done on their Maya Ooh. platform. Um, and it's an Orbea Orca well. OMX with SRAM Red Access. Also, apparently, got Ceramic Speed jockey wheels on it. There you go. It has. Zip uh, 454s. Bling. Nice, 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 nice. That Actually, is... it might be a super nice look. Tan sidewalls. Is it like a purpley colour? I think it is. I like it with the silver logo. I think that looks really smart. Yeah. Really smart. Simple. It's just it simple. Is. Classy. It's very classy. It's not quite in Biggie Smalls, but I think... Is it not? No. But I think that's... Mm, also, yeah. notice they've put an upgraded cockpit on there. It's got a Dada cockpit. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go super nice. Yeah, I'll go super nice. Yeah. Super nice, everyone, so far. Yeah. That was a good one. Oh, next we have Omar 10 with... A Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod. Oh. With Jura Ace. It's apparently it's their dream build. It's got Envy's on it. Um, Seller Italia SLR saddle. Wahoo Powerlink pedals. Poor, what did you make of that? It's the picture. Yeah, it's not selling it, is it? It's not Why selling is it precariously the bike. I feel like the, leaned up against that cannon. I feel like the cannon's the kind of main attraction here and the bike yeah. is just lent up. Maybe I think it would have been better. The cannon is more impressive. Yeah. Isn't it? Do you reckon it's, the wheels on the cannon 
Can and have um, our envies. Uh, <laughs> do you reckon the valves are aligned on it? The valves are real. I don't think they've had tires. Uh, I um, mean, it's, a, it's it. I mean, the bike itself. I think it's got a GCM nice. water bottle. I think it could be a super nice. I mean, now that I've seen the bottle. Now you've seen the bottle. Now I've seen the bottle, and the bottle does match the. Yeah, it colour coordinated it. So if you've got, a, well, we do different colours, but if you're a red bike, mm. uh, uh, yeah, mm, I think I've, I know I'm going to go nice because the cassette's dirty as well. I was going to super nice, but no, I'm, go I'm going nice. Just a nice. Yeah. Oh, we've got one more. Yeah, this is the last one this week from Velocipede Vegan. It's a '70s rally chopper. Wow. But it's, it was a Rally Chopper Mark IV. I think they reintroduced it, and you could buy the original, new Resto Mod Rally Chopper. I think. So I think that's what it is. But what do you make of that? It's different. I think that is. Maybe I think they that have is the, actually aligned the valves. I, yeah, I think yeah, it's super nice. Yeah. I love a Rally we'll Chopper. Super nice. I feel like we should do a video where we get a Rally Chopper. And have do, we not done that yet? The best, the ultimate children's bikes of all they time. They said they were for children. Well, it is, it is like a kid's bike, isn't it? Maybe we do like a sort of challenge where we have to get one of the most iconic children's bikes. Just make it happen. That's one of them. That is. Anyway, um, yeah, let us know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Uh, <laughs> and make sure and you what subscribe. bikes we should include. Yeah, what bikes we should include. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the show. Um, We'll see you next time. See you in the next one. Love you, bye. <laughs>